So uh, this one is because uh, a red cluster have some tainted nodes, nodes and uh, other components in, in the red cluster cannot run. So one of the methods is to ask to lower our resource limits for each services because we are not using them uh, always. And also, they are not serving the users. It's just for testing. So we can lower the request so resource limits. I think that's what uh, Christoph is mentioning here. There is an issue related to this. Uh, I can add that there. But we need to work on it. And that's about it. My question in relation to this would be, if anyone is actually trying to use the cluster till now, or have faced any issues. I use it once, but didn't encounter issues. Yeah, I think, I think we got a bunch of uh, head shake no's from everyone. I guess we can move on to the next one then. Can you use shares? Uh, the oh, yeah. yeah. Yep. Thanks. All right, there we go. All right. So next up, we have the provenance checks 2.0. Maybe let's wait until Christoph finishes for this yeah. one and the next one. Yeah, OK. Then we'll go to uh, Francesco's. I think I already asked, uh, but if you want to repeat. Um, but the suggestion was to have some documentation because it's still confusing because we have all of them and which one we should uh, modify or not. So. I added just uh, a note in that issue. Um, and the other comments, I didn't add them. I think Christoph added, maybe, or Pep. I, I did, yeah. Yes, so I think so. Yeah, this would be also useful. The issue that I uh, linked there is to, when you create a new repo, was what you should do. And I tried to link all the things that uh, I had to do for a one repo because it's not uh, that easy. I mean, you need to set pro, you need to go and add uh, some configuration file in common. So there are many things to be done when you want to set a new repo. And also is, in a, is not explain what are all the things, um, especially for someone that never did that. So I ask if you can add more documentation there. So, that's all. I think uh, if you don't have other comments here, I just add that action there. Uh, we are talking about code owners? About all of yeah. them. It's a bit uh, confusing. And uh, it would be nice to have an explanation of how they are used, who is taking over the others. Because uh, code owners, for example, for me in AICCI is always assigning Tom and Marcel does it make sense if my owners are Michael and uh, Ashard? So they should not be assigned as reviewers, but there should be Ashard and Michael aside. Yep. So to recap, what was discussed last time, summarized, if I remember correctly, is that code owners was is kind of legacy before it was there before the before the team started to use Prow, and after using, starting to use Prow, we should focus on owners and owner aliases as the source. Then the question, uh, one question I have is with Todd YAML. Uh, I actually am the ISO YAML, I guess. Right? Because the ISO YAML con considers Owners, are there, right? That's and large or the YAML file. I think the uh, Pike uh, Pep uh, is saying about uh, the maintainers in the dot dot YAML, and uh, there was an issue created by him in response to that. Yeah. 
Yeah, because it, it is some sort of duplication of, you know, if, if the repos already have information about who, who the maintainers are in the owner's file, I think there's no point in duplicating this in Todd.yaml. And in theory, it's documented, the, the Todd documentation, config documentation, the link there in the additional context uh, says that, you know, that section, the maintainer section of Todd.yaml is supposed to be optional. And if it's not present, it should pick owners, which I think sounds good, but no, sorry, go ahead. Okay, okay. That is something that I would like to know indeed, because I'm also, I think the ICACI consider owners, but thought release consider the maintainers, right? Isn't, isn't it on um, two different layers? So we are always talking about source code, right? Um, the uh, one thing is changes that should be applied to the source code, like a pull request is being opened. And we're gonna have a look at the owner's file and try to figure out A, who would be a good reviewer, who, who can ensure that the quality um, of the code change coming in is good. Uh, B, who would be an approver? So who's taking the uh, the uh, um, the accountability to 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 merge that piece of code? And then there is a second um, layer or a higher uh, layer where we talk about uh, packaging, um, maintaining the packaged source code. This is where um, Toth YAML and the maintainers of the uh, plugin come into the picture, right? So who should be allowed to create a new package release of a piece of software? Isn't isn't that what, what we are trying to achieve here? But to auto-merge, you need the Sheta in the Toth YAML or in the owners, the PRs. PRs are always merged by, um, uh, Pro, Pro uh, tight, the, the yeah. tight component, correct? And that is looking for uh, owners and owners alias. Okay. So you mean the dot, dot YAML maintainers would be the people with, you know, at this higher level of creating releases and, and shipping? Yeah. Um, um, Frido and uh, Kevin, that is what the the version plugin is doing, right? It's it's creating a new version release for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that that's really just packaging stuff. I I don't well, what is it doing. It, it doesn't. Really just... It doesn't even do the packaging. It just adjusts the versions in source code, and then I think uh, ASCOE uh, has to exactly. do the actual release. Yes, exactly. So, so we are really just cutting a release here. We we are um, updating the change log, uh, creating a pull request with that update, merge that pull request automatically by CI, and then create a Git tag, and that's basically it. Yes. Yeah, but then we we faced an issue. I don't remember the repo, but Frido the, the other day you you created a try to create a patch release and you were able to do that because you were in top.yaml, but you were not in the approvals list and therefore the, the PR itself wouldn't merge. So you were stuck there. So I would turn this into a question. Why would the list of maintainers be different from the ones from approvers if packaging is handled, let's say in AIC or ECI? It's uh, who can uh, trigger the release of, of a component. Uh, it's somehow redundant because uh, if you have, uh, let's say, approval uh, permissions, then you can open a pull request with your version one and uh, ask to, to, to release that component. So it's maybe really worth to document uh, which file and uh, what is the purpose of that file. So in, if that's in manager section of version manager, then it's release. If uh, there's information in code owners, that's uh, GitHub and GitHub asks for 
reviewing the pull request, and then we have these owners and owners aliases. Like they serve different purposes, uh, but you know, maybe maybe to make it clear, what's happening on these on these files. Um, just short circle back. Um, if we look at the Kavishet uh, version plugin and the maintainers, did you say that this is redundant because it is just protecting um, the bots from taking orders from unauthorized people, right? So if, if we don't have the maintainers, basically everybody can open an issue and um, Kavishet would go mm -hmm. ahead and create a release for it, correct? No, my suggestion is, if we don't have the maintainers in Todd.yaml, then only the approvers in owners would be able to. No, I think um, that is, uh, there's no correlation between these two. I, I mean, there is a correlation, but there's no uh, uh, real dependency between these two because uh, the maintainers just authorizes GitHub user IDs to make Kevishet work. If you put it in another way, uh, for this to work automatically, the maintainers have to be approvers because otherwise the, they cannot approve their own request to release. Um, that is correct, and uh, it's even worse. The um, the no, that is not correct. Yeah, there is an issue uh, this week. Uh, I think it was. Ah, so um, if if Frido is a maintainer, he can tell Kabishet to create a new release. Kabishet will open the pull request, but CI, uh, so Prow, will not do anything on that one. It will Until not merge someone it. approves. It mm -hmm, exactly. And what we're going to do is that we have the other satiator, the Zefget Up V component, component, which will approve that um, PR because it's an automatically created pull request, it will automatically be approved. And therefore, Sesheta is an approver in the owner's file so that we can have a fully automated uh, release process. It might be good to create a table where uh, there will be <laughs> like files and uh, what uh, the person in the given file uh, can do like role based access control. So in that case, you will see okay, if I'm stated in Totiano file in version uh, manager section, then uh, the version can be triggered. Uh, but I still don't need to be allowed to release, uh, not release, like approve compliance. So if the person is responsible for uh, creating new. Uh, component releases that go to deployment that should be done on every on any time on master right so master should be any time ready to be pushed to to cluster but that person doesn't need to be responsible for approving pull requests because that person doesn't need to know uh, the source code and the code base so that the table can be helpful, like role-based access control, and where you need to be uh, if you want to do something. On the A question from the user side: uh, Like whenever we make others like users to use Kabishet and they install Kabishet, uh, for example, the OS climate people or the Opric first people, uh, when they install, they have uh, they ask this question why they have to list their names twice in a place because they know the source code and they are only the people who want to release that their code so they want to make their or the code owners to only have the eligibility to release the code uh so in that sense this becomes like a dual task to do uh, mm -hmm. uh I, I, sounds like a feature request to the version manager right um, introduce a flag that is called uh, maintainers from owners. But I think that's what uh, is being shown on the screen. If you see, it's written there in maintainers that you can provide owners file and repository 
that same configuration. Yeah. Except but, that the syntax of the owner's file does not include the maintainer section. Yeah, so we're, we're asking them to create a new section of the owner's file uh, under maintainers. Ah. But, yeah. Got it. I was not aware of that. So if, if user creates maintainers uh, section in the owner's file, and then there is still the dot dot yaml with maintainers. Will it uh, patch them together and then check, or is it it checks? It'll get it from the owner's file. It's the because it, it, it does it. So it does it tries to read the owner's file first, and then if it fails getting them there, then it reads it from the dot dot yaml. Uh, well, why don't we get rid of the maintainer section? And because it's a hard dependency on the owner's file, then right. So so uh, yeah, the, you, you, yeah, you world. can work on repos that don't that don't have prow. So yes, exactly. I think uh, this is some leftover. Like it shouldn't be maintainers section, but the provers. Uh, maybe that's uh, some that's, something that yeah. uh, was introduced at the beginning, and it stayed in, in sources. So it's not maintainers, but approvals, maybe uh, because there are no maintainers section right in uh, on our file. Right. Yes. So. Um, so we always have prow and we advise everybody in in our close proximity to use prow that's uh, because ai CI is prow um if we're looking at the version manager plugin why don't we go ahead and get rid of the maintainers completely and make it a default behavior to look at the approvers of the owner file or uh, Kevin Frito, is that too much of depend hard dependency on an owner's file? I think I like the method which is right now and how Frito suggested uh, to change the maintainers to approvers. Uh, why I feel like that is suppose someone is inclined to use Kebishet, but they don't want to use uh, the pro setup, then still they can uh, maintain their uh, code with Kebishet. So they can still put their name in the owner's uh, category there. That would be my vote to just change the word from maintainers to approver and look up from owner's approvers. Yeah, uh, and then the other, the other question is, what should the default behavior be? Because it feels like it should be check the thought, thought that AML configuration first and then uh, the uh, owner's file. Just because it's it's more explicit if someone put it in the dot dot okay. mm -hmm. And the advice for all our projects would be don't put any maintainers in there because you are on prow anyway. Therefore, we will take the approvals from the owner's file, correct? Yes. Nicely. Uh, okay, cool. I had a, a related question, if I may, which is <laughs> who who should be the default, like in the project template, should we add, who should we add uh, as a default list of approvers and reviewers? There is an issue there, like the, with the first issue linked there is about this. It's a PR where I added everyone <laughs> everywhere, um, but Christoph rightly pointed out that probably it's yeah. the default. I think in the past, the policy was um, if you feel like you would like to be added to one of the sections, being approver or a um, reviewer, open a PR and add yourself. Um, the, the difference between the approvers and the um, reviewers is um, that a reviewer is used by Prow to be assigned to a pull request. So Prow is looking at the reviewers and trying to assign people. That is what GitHub implements by the code owner's file. 
um, and the the um, the reviewers should really make sure that the code quality is good. So uh, do a code review. Um, the approvers actually just take responsibility and say, okay, I, I completely trust my reviewers. Um, they did a perfect code review. I just click the button and merge that crap by putting the uh, approve uh, comment into, into uh, a git comment. Um, so it's really just taking more or less responsibility being a prover. Um, who would be in there by default? I would not make it a very large list of people um, because it heavily depends on the component, right? Um, if, if you are looking at messaging, I'm pretty, pretty sure that uh, Kevin is a good reviewer for that. Um, specifically, Kevin should be an approver for that. So it's component related. Um, same for advisor, right? If if you look at who has most knowledge on advisor, who could give the best code reviews, there's a few specific people. So if we, if we're really talking about the template project, I would shorten the list to the minimum. And because I am gone, I'm I'm always in there. But that is really just to make sure that somebody is in there who could do everything. It could be I think Frido and myself. We are always in there. Uh, for historical reasons. Okay. Um, I don't know how the operate first people handle that stuff. Um, they have a little bit, bit a little bit different um, approval process. So they always need one looks good to me and one and approval. one approver. Yeah, that's yes. yeah. I. Uh, I don't feel like we need that from a process point of view, um, but I don't know how they handle the content of, of the owner's file, who is an approver and who's a who's a reviewer. Maybe they have an opinion on that one. Um, for me, it feels like uh, whoever wants to be in there, whoever feels like this is a component I want to I want to have my hands on, either to learn or or to 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 control it or whatever. Um, add yourself uh, to that file. Just can learn actually, there's no control here. Okay, okay one final comment on this. Uh, maybe, maybe that workflow of requiring LGTM and the proof, we are not ready yet. <laughs> this probably it's more for bigger projects, but no, one... Um, that, that's not what, one. what I read here. Um, we are not ready for it because we don't want it. Um, mm -hmm. Well, if, it's if, you, if you become... Yeah, we implemented it in, in a project that grew big, and it was, you know, it, it, it reaches a point where you will want it because um, to make sure that things are under control without having someone who oversight everything. Um, it's kind of the, yeah, but my my request was only if we could, as best practice, um, stop using the buttons and use the commands to the bot, uh, like slash approve instead of uh, merging, whenever possible, you know, uh, or LGT, slash LGTM instead of adding the label or manually adding the labels that I think it's an exercise of good practice for the future. I think it's it's a good idea. Like some people, like myself, I, I cannot add the labels. I don't have the permissions, but I don't want to. I mean, I, so and, and new people, if new people, when new people comes, let's do like everyone do the same, uh -huh. if that makes sense. Yes. So. Um... That, that somehow refers also to the Git uh, hub permissions um, that everybody has. I think all of us are in the um, devs team, so you can open and uh, close issues and stuff like that, but you cannot triage issues. So uh, putting a milestone on it and, and stuff like that. I think we've seen that in the um, planning session yesterday. Um, uh, Brow opens up that um, behavior or that configuration of GitHub a little bit by accepting um, comments. Uh, for me, that is a matter of transparency. Um, 
um, whatever is in a comment can is, is easy to understand and is nicely put in a timeline. I think for most of the GitHub actions, uh, that's anyways true, uh, but having it in a comment is, is kind of unifying. Um, I think it was just a call out, right, Pep? You, you say everybody, everybody use comments, right? Good. Yeah. Then, I, then I'm quiet now. Yeah, sorry, I did a few merges because Tide was down or something. Sure. Uh, from. Uh, so to have, to have things for the upcoming release. But yeah, yeah, yeah the, I'm sorry. Yes. I th I, am. I, I still push push to master on the TOS application. So uh, every everybody has one of these um, bad behaviors, I guess. Uh, I'm super happy that uh, my video is just frozen and I can't see Hashard uh, raising his fist on me for pushing to master. I think next we have one from Maya, if you wanna go. Um, so I remember I had yeah, this question concerning uh, a new issue I, I was trying to open uh, to see if uh, Kevachet was uh, doing an automatic release uh, of the my version of, I think, the tutorial and uh, it didn't work for me, so. If you want maybe to explain to me uh, how this works and maybe, I don't know, <laughs> just uh, tell me what, what is required to make this work. Uh, so I can answer that. Uh, this, was qu this question was uh, from the last week and we carried it over for this week. Uh, last week there was a bug. Uh, the bug was uh, that, so what happened is we checked uh, the pipeline through and through till Kavishet, and I can see that Kavishet was running, but that means the, the issue was in Kavishet, and we checked that the Kavishet was having issue with the changelog creation, uh, because we were happy had changed the read write policy in creating the changelogs. So Kevin and I had fixed that, and now it is able to do that. I had checked it on the issue, which is linked there from Francesco, uh, and it works in there. Now, if you close this or like, uh, the issue and recreate the new patch release, minor release, you should have it working in your repository as well. It was just a bug which we fixed and it's already in production. Okay, okay, thank you. So I, I will try that, thanks. All right, yeah, and if, if you do run into problems, just let me know because I can take a look and see if something else didn't get fixed that needs fixed for that. Then uh, a general shout out, um, please uh, life cycle issues. So um, Hashard, uh, Kevin, if you think that one is fixed by Maya, uh, feel free to close it, right? It, it should not be on, on me or um, specific persons to close uh, issues. Um, yes. I'll link them and write up and close it. Oh, okay. And a general call out uh, also also to myself, but when we do this type of thing, uh, like those um, quick comments to close or something, it wouldn't hurt to, I'm not playing you, Kevin, again, playing especially myself, at the line of why this is you know being closed, like this has been fixed or something like The more detailed, the better. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a good uh, um, call out to ourselves. Um, yeah. Put it put a little bit context in there because I'm the. Specialist. I, I was reviewing what the updates I did during the planning session, and yeah, yeah. I was wondering why did I write this here? And so, if at the time I had written this there, yeah. So I'm 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 a specialist in creating commit messages which read dot 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 or dot dot. So I, I, I feel you, um, putting a little bit context in there is a good idea always. Thanks, I'm sorry. 
All right, and then we have the last one from Harshad. Uh, so this is a question uh, which was prompted to me uh, from the first link in there. So uh, he installed Kebishet on organization level because it's easier for, it's the easiest way to install it uh, for all the repositories. Uh, so, but the organization also contains few repositories which actually doesn't have any code. Uh, like for example, for now in our in our organization, there is a talk repository which just have talks and it doesn't have any any code in it. Uh, but Kebishet will open an issue saying install this dot 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 yaml file with all this inf information, and that has also happened in other repositories in other organization. So they are a little confused on why is being you installed. We know the reason because it's installed on all net of him, but like asking them to uninstall if they don't like it is something asking them to go over their 100 repositories and then only select which they like. So I just thought maybe we should have a discussion on what we can do here uh, to make it easier for users. Let me know if I, it didn't make sense. I'll rephrase it. Yeah, so I did. I did change the default dot thought dot yaml with the expectation that this might be an issue in some places. So I disabled all the managers. Um, I'm not sure uh, what we can do to help out users and make it more clear, but like uh, disabling it on individual repositories. Mm, can, can can we uh, can we have an like an organizational uh, solution for that? I mean, not changing any technological parts, but just maybe putting a disclaimer in here. Uh, hey, uh, thanks uh, for putting Kebishet on your organization. Um, we don't see any configuration file. Uh, if 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 this repository is not containing any source code, um, feel free to simply close this PR. Um, um, if you think uh, Kebishet should maintain source code, merge this PR so that we can let people know why we open that pull request because we want to help them maintain their source code and they can give us a little bit feedback like, uh, no, I don't want it, simply close the PR. Well, feedback, ignore the feedback part so that people can simply close it, but they, they again have a context. Maybe it's that easy. I don't know how 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 does everybody feel about that? Um, um, plus one for that. Uh, also, we should make sure that once the user closes it, we should not recreate it. Exactly. That was the feedback part I, I had on my mind. Maybe we can um, get a little bit feedback. OK, the issue has simply been closed. Sorry, the pull request has simply been closed without being merged, which is like an indicator for us. And as we are AI COE people, maybe we can have a machine learning model which is trying to figure out why it has been uh, closed. So, so next time we don't open it based on a prediction. Uh, but yeah, not opening or not reopening the pull request or not recreating a similar pull request should also be um, a thing. So, so I, I, I think there, there should be, we should gather feedback like, it has been closed without a merge. Um, and we should make sure that we don't open a pull request, a similar pull request again. So it's not just an organizational change, it's also a technology change. Uh, back to the previous, uh, it's a brief info, information about managers and uh, what that pull request does. Uh, this can be extended in uh, the pull request body or in the pull request uh, message uh, on the GitHub, but also in Tot YAML configuration file. So if this uh, gets merged, and the users open configuration file, they know where to go, you know? So if there's info manager, uh, then there can be some brief information about info, info manager and linking to uh, documentation where more information can be found make it part of the default yeah. uh, configuration. 
that is a comment that triggers my nagging mode. Um, you say we are we are putting comments in our source code with links to documentation. That's that's what you're proposing here. Proposing uh, brief information about uh, the manager, yes. and uh, having a way uh, to point users uh, if they want to find more information on mm -hmm. selecting manager, for example. Sounds good. Yes. So um, the full request description would be more like, uh, hey, uh, we are doing this because we want to help you. Um, this is configuring Kebishet, blah, 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 blah. But we also explicitly put um, comments into the YAML file itself and point back to the documentation in the YAML file itself. Correct? Sounds yes. good to me. Yeah. Uh, that that feels like a good user experience. Yeah, there's there's also an issue with uh, processing webhooks from these repositories too, because um, it does whenever we get a webhook, it will uh, spin up a Kevishet pod. Um, so adding adding a check in uh, the user API that receives the webhooks. I, I I'm blanking on where where those come in. Yeah, so adding a check on user API, maybe just downloading the .sat.yaml um, and checking to make sure that some manager in there uh, is enabled before actually uh, kicking off a pod would be good because there's no reason to start a container if we're not actually going to do anything. Would we have a toss YAML file without any managers? Why, why do we do that? Uh, so it could look like this. So if they might have merged it and had them all set to false, or they might just not have a dot 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 yaml file. That's. Mm. Mm. But but the the problem with the not having a dot 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 yaml file is we don't know whether a user left out configuration or whether um, they explicitly did put that file in. Maybe let's keep track of that. I mean, we we have uh, the GitHub application installation table, I guess, right? So we know each and every organization that has installed Kevishet. So we would also gather information from a pull request being closed without merge that this repository does not need any action. Maybe we just take that feedback uh, pull request being closed without merge and configure the behavior you just described if kebishet finds that information user don't want me to work on it don't do anything that would actually also prevent recreating the pull request i guess but but another thing we, we run all the managers every time in any case right not all the managers all the managers stated there Shouldn't we filter? I mean, if I open in Kebeshet update, which was what happened the other day, I open up release with the issue and the issue never finished. But then I asked for an update and the update gave me the release because the, all the managers were run. Is it uh, good that we run all of them? I mean, all of, not all of them. If I have five enabled, but I ask for Kebeshet update, also the other are triggered, right? Yeah. So it because I, I don't know if that's if that's the right thing to do, but the, I think the idea is that if you you run the managers and they check if Kevishet should run uh, based on the state of the repository. I think that is the 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 behavior here, right, Frido? That is how we designed it. Uh, so, if you take a look at the overhead for uh, webhook that is received, then uh, queuing, uh, then spinning up container for Kubehead and things like that, it's quite large overhead. So, uh, once Kubehead is up and running, it can check whatever is needed to, to finish. And from user point of view, to finish work on the repository. And from user point of view, it doesn't matter if uh, the trigger is a new issue for new release or something else. Mm -hmm. 
right? Uh, and um, the code itself for these managers is quite short, so executing it is uh, quite expensive for uh, once the Kebehead container is up and running. And that can lead to another issue that is like optimizing Kebehead. Uh, so uh, there's an issue on, on Kebehead repository that could uh, optimize Kebehead runs in a deployment. And that would uh, partially solve also Christoph's uh, proposal. So uh, basically what that issue talks about, uh, if we receive a webhook from a repository, then uh, user API can note down that there's a webhook in uh, process and schedule analysis of Kebehead, like not analysis, but Kebehead run. So if there's another uh, webhook coming in, we do not run multiple Kebeheads for the same repository. Is that clear? And Kebehead will basically run the webhook. And uh, in that run, we'll take a look at everything that, that is uh, needed to, to make the users happy. Is that is a very... You're basically proposing uh, concurrency equals one? Mm -hmm. Yes. For all Kebehead. That uh, solves, yeah. for example, uh, the solver issues. We had uh, the solver repository and uh, there were multiple uh, Kebeheads just for one repository. And as each Kebehead does exactly the same job, there's no reason why we should run multiple Kebeheads. And if we want to scale up, uh, with number of repositories that Kebehead wants to manage, uh, then the solution can be uh, like long term. It can be something to to consider. Mm. Sounds good. I if, um, feels to me like there could be a race condition somewhere because if we miss a webhook. Uh, we don't change state, but that would just lead what what will happen. We will be in the state Kebeshed is running and we won't start a new one, right? So we need some kind of expiry for that concurrency one uh, thing. Yeah. And that's uh, discussed in the issue. So uh, instead of having like Boolean flag for concurrency, have a timestamp. So if we miss uh, some Kebeshed webhook uh, today, uh, because Kafka was down or whatever was wrong in deployment and uh, users retry in two hours. Okay, uh, we know that after two hours, all Kebeheads should be, for, for that particular repository, should be done. Like one should be already finished. Is it clear so, somehow? So we basically yeah. say in two hours, uh, we don't run any other Kebeheads. Yeah. Sounds good to me. Sounds... Also, it sounds to me like uh, we did some kind of um, a sprint planning session for the Kebeshed component in the past 20 minutes or so, which is also very good from my point of view. All right, so I think that's everything then. I don't know if we came up with a, what was the final solution for the uh, this last one? I don't know if there was a. This was uh, document more and um, so, well, there were two things. Uh, one is document more both in the description of the PR and then in the default in general, in the default top of general configuration with comments and pointers, but then also keep track of when the PR gets closed and prevent. We could also opening. tell people if they don't want Kebeshet to run to just 
merge it anyways. That way we can use the configuration for uh, gating and just make that also clear. Would that be? What do you want to merge? So um, as a in, in the pull request uh, that um, was up, this one, um, basically have this be more verbose um, with yes. like manager configuration and stuff. And then also uh, add something about like, if you don't want Kevishet running, um, merge this without any managers enabled. Mm, that... No, why Why would I do so? Why, why would I take a configuration file into my source code if I don't want things to happen? I I would um, I would do I, I would set that flag on this specific repository the flag don't do anything for Kevishet uh, based on the fact that the user just closes the this issue. I, I just than... worry about never actually being able to re-enable Kevishet on the repository because once once it's disabled, how do we? You can always ah. you can always have the top of YAML manually if they want to enable it. Like if they know but what it, they are doing, right? So. If we if we've set a flag to not yes. have Kevishet run on it, then even if it's they add the dot dot yaml. No, it's a good point. Um, um, I guess uh, the question is, um, or you could turn it into a user story, right? Um, as a user of Kevishet, um, I have disabled my uh, Kevishet deployment on a certain repository, um, and I want to enable Kevishet on that repository, um, well, how do I do that? Um, um, can they open an issue? Like That's a good question, exactly. <laughs> disable Kevishet. But, or, but Kevishet or... won't, won't run because <laughs> they <laughs> disabled Kevishet. So it becomes like a chicken and egg oh, issue. Um, yeah. Um, uh, um, uh, Kevin, uh, talk to Tom. Tom is a user of uh, Dependa bot, and there is another bot out there. Let's have a look at how they do it. Okay. Because it feels like uh, like a valid and a common use case. Um, may, so... Maybe we just uh, put put their user uh, ID on a list and uh, bug them every five weeks. Hey, would you like to have Kevishet? I got a Kevishet for you. It can be um, like uh, Kebekhead opens a pull request with uh, initialization. And uh, that, what's the trigger of that? Is it like uh, installation, new installation on that repository? Uh, so Kebekhead looks um, whenever it runs. So, so it gets a webhook for that repository. Um, and then it runs, sees that there's no configuration, um, and then opens uh, this pull request. So if there's no configuration in TOT, uh, sorry, uh, no configuration in the repository, uh, then there's chicken egg problem, right? So if we know that TOT YAML is present or not. Okay. Is there a webhook, like new installation on a repository? Uh, I think so. I'd have to look into it. I know uh, Sai did a lot of yeah. the, like initial repository installation stuff. I, I don't know. Work. Like receive a webhook, new installation, then run the head. And uh, otherwise, check if .yaml is present in the repository. I, I think the way to um, really provoke GitHub sending out the webhooks is complicated because um, um, I think we tell people to install it on an organizational level. Therefore, we receive installation uh, webhook. And if we want to resend that one, we need to reconfigure, either remove it, which we don't want, um, and reinstall it. Or we need to reconfigure the Kevishet application to have it per repository, add all repositories, and then we would receive a webhook, install webhook per repository. But that also feels like 
strange. Why why would we put that burden on a on a user just to get our stuff in? And if a user <coughs> if a user enables Kabekit on organization level and does nothing on repositories, then I they... think that is that is one install webhook, I guess. Mm -hmm. So in that case, will the stored initial configuration uh, pull request happen? Yes. If there's, I don't know, is what would be the trigger? Uh, so it's whenever so because Kebuchet is enabled on the repositories, um, then any webhook that um, Kebuchet is configured to run with uh, will cause that pull request to be opened. Mm -hmm. so, so if there's no webhook on on a repository. Then uh, the then the uh, pull request won't be opened. Okay. Okay. Let's let's try to to find out the solution for it. Yeah. We will need to um, drop. Sure. Yeah. Cool. Where are two topics that we skipped? Ah, and they are they are already moved. Sorry, you brought me here. Exactly. Um, that is uh, like uh, provenance and Zig store related stuff. Um, the uh, Zig store related stuff goes back to a discussion. I, I think I initiated it with uh, Frida one or two times. Um, basic question is, uh, Zig store can provide us with information like uh, package release is signed or not. Um, ciao, Frida. Uh, package release is signed or not, is that interesting information for us to incorporate it into the resolution workflow? Um, I could imagine something like a report which says 25% um, of your packages are not signed. We're, gonna, we're not gonna deploy that um, software stack. Um, so th that is the background or the tech, uh, the context for, for these two things. Same for provenance. I think provenance is something that might be interesting uh, from a security point of view. So uh, nothing to discuss now, push it forward. Yeah, so I guess we'll discuss those next time. Um, and if everybody, I think we have one minute before the meeting ends. Uh, oh no, the meeting's over. Never mind. Yeah, it is yeah, uh, over. Mi minus 14 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, I'll give everybody back a minute, but I'm, I took I took 15 minutes from everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's on you. It's on you. Um, nice. Uh, um, that's it. All right. OK. Wait. Thanks, everybody. See you. See you next week. Thank you. Night. Hush out.